Hello, adventurous travelers and friends, and welcome back to Brackworthy Adventures. I'm your host, Rose, and today we are on Marco Island, Florida, home to 1,000 islands and a unique ecological landscape. Now, while we are here, we are waiting for our van to get finished being built, and we are taking the opportunity to create a series of videos on awesome tour companies in the area. Today, we are meeting with Rising Tide Explorers. Now, Rising Tide Explorers is unique in the fact that they use 100% local biologists and science professionals to guide their tours. So the person on your tour telling you what's up knows what they're talking about. And if you're anything like me, then you will be thrilled with the opportunity to learn about the world around you. They also are, are the exclusive partner of the Rookery Bay. And so they have some access to waterways and piers that others don't get. So I'm very excited to be going on a tour with them today. I'm actually gonna be doing multiple of their tours because they have multiple tours and I wanna give you the full scope of what they have to offer. Today's tour is a boat tour. It's um, Life's a Beach shelling tour. So we're gonna go get some beautiful shells, see the waterways, maybe see some awesome creatures and get to learn about the critters that lived in the shells and the land around us. I hope you're excited. Let's hit the water and see what we can learn. Now, this tour is located in one of the old field stations used by the Rookery Bay research people. And as you can see, it's on 10 Shell Island Road. Along the road, we saw birds, gopher tortoises, and raccoons. You might see interesting stuff yourself. When you're there, you can go ahead and go inside the building or meet at the picnic tables with your guides. We had to run inside because the mosquitoes were vicious. We'll head out from Shell Island Road, which everybody came down through today, and we're going to cruise through some uh, through this smaller bay. But right here, again, if we have time, if we want to explore more on the boat, we could dip into Rookery Bay. That's where we got our name from, and there's a critical wildlife area there um, that uh, has lots of birds roosting on it. So that's where we got our designation from. Mangrove islands uh, that allow for a lot of uh, birds to either rest or nest. So a rookery. And um, we are doing a lot of research here. So our research is primarily monitoring. And I keep saying hours, hours, because rising tide is a part of this reserve. I feel like I'm going on a scientific expedition like the thornberries or something. I'm gonna go explore the world and discover new things. Especially with a pair of binoculars. I know, these are like legit too. I don't really know how to use them though. I'm gonna figure it out. So after getting to know our guides and getting an introduction to the area and to the work that Rising Tide Explorers does, we got on the boats and headed out to explore nature and to head towards Key Wade for our shelling. After we docked, we got to learn a little bit about the three types of mangroves that are in this estuary. This is our black mangrove, and it has kind of more of a sage green kind of leaf. And then this is our white mangrove, it has a very round leaf. Oh, they're right next so, to each other. Yeah, they're right next to each other here. So these guys both um, exclude salt from their systems. Oh. So, uh, or they extrude them. The red mangrove excludes it. So the red mangrove that's right in the water all the time doesn't even allow the salt into its system. It kind of like reverse osmosis the salt out. And so it doesn't have to deal with it in its system. The white mangrove uh, has these little like hairs on the leaf that are like microscopic and they have like water bubbles that are super, super salty that will burst. And that's how they get rid of their salt. And then the black mangrove extrudes it on the back of the leaf. And so the back of the leaf is salty. And so that's why she was saying that you can even lick them if you want. I think they kind of taste like mangrove tree crab, so I don't usually do it, but. After our introduction to those mangroves, we headed across the island to the other side where the beach part was and got attacked by mosquitoes. It was definitely a bit of a buggy day. It is June when we did this tour. And so the bugs and the rain are just a part of Florida. 
but as we got to the other side, we happened across a gopher tortoise, which was so cool, just lying on our path. I feel like we came across a lot of different creatures because we were in a protected habitat for them, so they wanted to be there. Now you'll notice we're entirely alone here in this clip, and that's not because Kiwaden isn't popular. That's because Rising Tide has access to a private dock, so you get almost an abandoned stretch of land just for yourself on this tour. So far, an amazing boat ride. I've already learned that there are three types of mangroves, not just one, red, black, and white. Um, and now we've made it to Kiwaden Island, and I'm gonna start looking for some shells and seeing what I can collect. I found so many interesting shells, I even found a dried up starfish, and once I had these shells I was able to bring them to my guide and they were able to help me identify them. Now they had a book to help with identification, but they also were able to identify many on their own because these are science professionals, and they do tell you about their individual perspectives at the beginning of the tour. I'm uh, born and raised here, and uh, my background is more ecology, um, but I'm getting my master's right now, whoo, almost done, and um, in science communication. And I work at the reserve, I'm a research education specialist. So I've been with the reserve for about seven years, and captaining for these tours for um, just be about two years coming up. So, uh, so that's kind of my background, and as you meet other guides and people who work for this company, um, you know, it's very different. Uh, we've got two other people here, you want to tell them just a little snippet of that? Who you um, are? I think I just mentioned a couple of people. I was born and raised in New York, in the suburbs, in Westchester, if anyone's ever heard of it. Um, I just moved here last August to start at FGC. I'm also doing my master's. Mine is not super interesting. Um, my undergrad yes, it is. was... <laughs> yes. I'm well, sure my is original right one was very interesting. But um, my undergrad was in biology. It was in upstate New York in Oneonta, another place no one's probably ever heard of. But now I'm down here, and my thesis advisor does a lot of policy work, so I'm hoping to continue forward with that. Ooh. Very important policy. <laughs> and would you like to just say yeah. you know, something you do? Yeah, I'm Robin. I also work here, um, and I am currently the Audubon Shorebird Steward. So I work out of here, and every weekend I drive out to here, this little edge of Mercury Bay is also a critical wildlife area and right now I have about 1,055 uh, black skimmers that are nesting and about 500 royal terns and sandwich terns. So this is also a super popular boating spot where people like to go out and just like party. So I hang out there and kind of poop on their party and like to tell them about birds and why they should not be like molesting the birds. <laughs> so yeah, uh, three different uh, you know avenues right here. But uh, yeah, so between the three of us, gosh, um, you know, please ask questions. Uh, we are all really passionate about this place and um, we want to share. And they definitely did a good job of sharing it. I felt like it was awesome that anywhere I turned, there was someone intelligent that I could ask my questions to and get real answers and learn about the mangroves, learn about the birds I was seeing. We did uh, end up going over to this little rookery spot where lots of birds nest and it was just amazing. Time passed quickly because I was so enjoying myself, but the end of the tour was near and it was time to head back home. Okay, adventurers, that is the end of the Life's a Beach shelling tour. It was honestly fantastic. It felt relaxed. It was a small crowd, which meant you could ask your questions and, and get answers and point things out to the guide without feeling like you're one of many trying to get their attention. And it was one of the best tours I've done on Marco Island. 
But if you aren't done learning for the day, the nice thing about your ticket is because they're friends with the Rookery Bay, we get to go over to the Rookery Bay Learning Center and get free access to check out what they have there. So we're gonna head there now and show you the Learning Center. And then tomorrow we'll actually be back again on another tour. They showed us where we exit um, to do some kayaking on the mud flats and mangroves with them. But so far I'm blown away, got to find cool shells, got to see cool birds, learn more about mangroves. What else could you ask for? Beautiful sun, wonderful day. The Learning Center is not that far from Shell Island Road, so we were able to make a quick drive on over there. It did seem a little hard to find the entrance, you gotta go through a couple paths, but once you're in, uh, it was pretty easy for them to look up your name, see that you've been on a tour, and then provide you a sticker for access. The Learning Center had all sorts of interesting exhibits. They had volunteers who were eager to help, they had a touch pool with live animals, and they had a theater room so you could learn more. That Learning Center, the shelling tour, it, it's been an amazing day, but it's time to head home. Tomorrow we will be going out and we will be kayaking with Rising Tide Explorers, but that's gonna be in a separate video. So if you're interested in watching that, feel free to subscribe because that'll be coming out soon, or I'll link it up above once it's already done if you're just here to learn more about Rising Tide Explorers. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.